everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Thanks. All right, I'm recording. Uh, if you guys are present, type in present and all that. Um, cool. How are you guys doing? I hear that a uh, number of Corona cases are rising, specifically in Montana and, and at MSU. I had a bit of a, had a false alarm COVID event here, but uh, we're good, so. I know for a fact that I tested negative, but I know at That's least good. people tested positive hey jason is is zoe going to a uh, daycare yeah she she's back yeah they're, that's what i'm worried about yeah they're pretty cautious this is a pretty small daycare though too so yeah well, i'm glad at, at least people in this uh live lecture are doing all right I was uh, I was sick last week and it's like, oh no. <laughs> Did you get uh, tested or are you just? It's it's yeah. pretty it's pretty impossible to get tested here. Um, oh. So, no. But um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I guess I'm fine now and I'll quarantine when I'm back in the states next week. So you know. Sure. It's fine. I mean, you know, people still get like a, but I, I had like a sore throat, right? Like people get sore throat when the weather changes. Yeah, I don't like know. Normally I wouldn't bat an eye, right? But now it's like, is it Corona? Is it cancer? Well, yeah, like what's going to happen when everyone starts getting cold and sick and just like other sickness? I think they'll shut yeah. down the school. Like, I don't, it's like, if you can't get a test for a couple of days and you can't get results for a couple of days after you get the test, it's just going to be a mess. It's hard. Yeah, I think it's scary to a lot of people, you know. So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, well, we got quite an attendance today. Awesome. Again, if you guys are present today, uh, say present or type in present in uh, the chat. We'll record that. Um, all right. I have um, one of my favorite lectures for you guys today. I don't know if it's going to work remotely, but I will try. I'll try to get this to work. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very short lecture if this doesn't work. Um, all right. So I said we'll talk about SDNs, but I'm, uh, I, I switched stuff around in the schedule. I forgot about it. Well, I switched stuff around for this course. So your schedule has always been this way. SDNs are coming um, a little bit later in the schedule, but um, the order of my slides is still not updated. So I said we'll cover SDNs today, but we're actually going to cover them later. Instead, we'll start getting into uh, the link layer today. Um, so, oh, by the way, are there any questions before we dive into the material? I did uh, actually have a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You, you go, you go. I'll go after. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I did have a quick question on, um, oh, maybe I shouldn't ask this. I guess technically the quiz might, some people might not be done with it yet. Um, yeah, so let me let me say one thing about the the homeworks. Uh, maybe this will uh, settle this dilemma for you. So there's a thing where um, I, I open them up to allow resubmissions, um, and I kind of uh, went back and forth on it. But um, I think I'm going to let you guys submit as many times as you like. Um, so you can the the remaining quizzes are auto graded. So you can figure out what your answers, if your answers were wrong. And I'm going to say, if you understand why your answer was wrong and you understand why the right answer is correct, you can go ahead and change it to the right answer and resubmit. So you can get back some points if you lost any. I guess in that case, um, <laughs> I was really curious when it, uh, it was talking about how um, you can get reordering and one of spoiler alert corruption was on there and i was really curious i unselected it because i was trying to think how that would work like how it would reorder things based with corruption when basically it's still waiting 
on an acknowledgement of that. Um, and even if it was to get all of those packets out of order, doesn't it just like get rid of those? Um, as a, or is that not really part of? I don't know. I, I guess I, I got a little confused on on that one. Yeah. So I I don't remember the specific question of hand. So let's see if we can do it generally without diving in. But if I if I remember this, um, the corruption results in packets not being accepted, and so it will need to be retransmitted, which effectively means packets are arriving out of order. Right, but I thought that the, the packets that were out of order, since the sequence number doesn't get bumped, basically just throws those away. And so it would resubmit anyways. I guess I um, is how I was thinking of it. So it would it'd still be getting them in order, but um, it, it, I guess it could get packets that would be the next sequence up. So yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah so the arrival of packets to the transport layer from the network may be out of order, but they will be passed on. The bytes will be passed in in order to the application layer. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Um, and my question was about the programming assignment. Um, I was working on the second part, um, and I don't know if I'm implementing- Which programming this, assignment? The segmentation one, um, three, okay. programming assignment three. Yep. Um, I don't know if I'm implementing the segmentation part in the wrong class, I was doing it in the router. Mm -hmm. I'm running into this problem where um, on the link layer, um, if so, for example, from host, uh, from the client to the router, um, the information doesn't even reach the router because the link layer stops it because it knows that the interface going in the router won't fit it. So it doesn't even let it break uh... it up. So I don't know if yeah 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 okay okay I see what the problem is I tried to fix I tried to fix the assignment from last year um, and I see how like you're never even gonna get the packet at this point um, wait is that true yes I think it is okay yeah because then if I commented out that portion um, the return part yes. of that portion it went through fine uh, so I was wondering if there was like any way of I don't know Great if we point. need to implement anything at the link layer level or. Yep, um, I'll send an update. Um, I'll explain this one sec. Um... Okay, yeah, there was an, there was an issue uh, last year with the assignment where the MTU was part of the link, the actual link, but not the interface, um, which when you were doing the when you were doing the uh, the segmentation, you couldn't you didn't have access to the MTU variable. Um, so, what the intention was that you should be able to see what the interface of the MTU is before you actually do the transmission. Um, so wait, no. So that should so would this still work? So the, in the first part, I'm, I'm opening up PyCharm right now so I can actually see what the questions okay. are. Um, on the first part, where's my PyCharm? There it is. Keep loading. Okay. <clears throat> on the first side, you have to you have to divide the packet at the at, at the client, right? And so the client should be yes. able to to look at the to look at the interface and see that, okay, but that's just the sending interface, not the arriving interface. Okay, I see what the problem is. So it could be that the client sends the data, but the router's interface has the MTU is too small to receive it. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, so we need the MTU to be the same. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's possible for the client to, to send the data, but it never arrives at the at the router. Um, because the router kind of arriving MTU is smaller. And therefore you can't segment the packet. Right. Now at the um 
not just like an assignment, but broadly speaking, when this happens, like, is it blocked at the link layer or is it like, does it go through the interface? Then the router is like, no, I'm not going to deal with this. I have to segment it before forwarding it over. Is, is that what happens or, or does it actually, does the sending host need to know the interface of the destination beforehand? Yeah, what, what happens is that the, the MTU, the MTU is a property of the link. So the two interfaces um, that, that connect over a link need to negotiate as to the size of the MTU. So if you, can, if you can send a packet, you should be able to receive it, right? If it can be sent, then gotcha. it's going to be received. You're not going to have like an MTU conflict between a sending and an arriving interface. Um, what happened in the original assignment is that the MTU was a function of the link of the interface. Mm -hmm. And so when you needed to do segmentation, you didn't actually have access to the MTU because the interface class didn't have an MTU uh, value in it. Um, okay. And so your packets would be rejected, but there was no way to actually, you would just see them as being not transmitted, but you didn't have a way of checking the MTU before sending. Um, so I fixed that problem, but it looks like I may have created a problem where there's a mismatch between MTUs on the arriving, uh, sending and arriving. So I need to do something about it. Um, so that you can basically check the sender, your sending interface MTU, and then if your packet is under that size, then it will arrive. It's not going to get rejected somewhere on the network. Um, gotcha. okay. Sorry about that, but does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I was just wondering if I was just like, doing it wrong. <laughs> no, thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah, I'm always trying to improve these things and uh, sometimes it runs into problems. Okay, cool. I'll send them an update. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, great. Um, in that case, um, let's get into the lesson plan. Okay. Okay, great. How about from this slide? Great, link layer. All right, so um, if you guys were to travel from Bozeman to Paris, um, how many different transportation technologies would you use? Or could you use maximally? The person that could come up with most transport technologies wins. Okay, go. Think about it for a second. And then when you have a good idea, raise your hand and tell us how many technologies you could possibly use. Are we talking about physically or are we talking about like... Uh, physically, you, you I travel. I would say four, maybe five. Okay, what do you got? Uh, well, I would probably take an Uber to the airport. I would take a plane from Montana to Paris. I would take the subway or the train from the airport to the city center. And then I would either rent a bike, walk, um, some sort of um, transportation like that to get to the Eiffel Tower. So four, maybe five, depending on if I'm walking or if I'm maybe taking a bus to. Okay, yeah, yeah. You could also walk from your house to the Uber. Right. Yeah, that's your, that's your last file. You yeah, that. Exactly. All right. Well, who's got something else? Another mode of transportation. Uh, I'll add to that underground, underwater tunnel from if you live in London, London first and then go to Paris that way. Oh, that's <laughs> true. There is the there is the tunnel. Yeah, I forget about that. Yeah. What else? What else could you use? You could take a ferry from uh, one of the airports into, like, say, Canada or something like that and fly out from there. Yep. Yeah. You could take a container ship across the ocean. Um, I've also had uh, hot air balloons. Michael, do you have anything else? 
Oh, you're forgetting. Moving walkway. I like it. Use inside of the airport. So elevator, escalator, people mover. Okay. Great. Those are great examples. So if you think of your travel from Bozeman to the Eiffel Tower, right, that is a path, right? You're, you're creating some route uh, along the globe for yourself, and then you are using different links uh, to, let's say, walk from A to B and then take an escalator and then take a plane, right? Those are different links between different intermediate destinations. And this is exactly what happens in the internet. We have a path that is taken care of by the network layer and routing, um, but that path is glued together from different link layer technologies um, that actually cover the distance by moving the bits of your data in different forms uh, from the source to the destination. Okay. So we can look at different types of link layer technologies that uh, can make up a path. Okay. So from your phone, you can communicate uh, using the electromagnetic spectrum in different frequencies, so over Wi-Fi. Right, or over 3G, 4G, 5G. Okay, so this would be, broadly speaking, 900 megahertz, right, or different frequencies. And there would be one protocol for managing this and another protocol for managing that. Then you get to some wired infrastructure, let's say from um, Wi Fi to uh, over Ethernet to your switch or your router. Okay, um, and all these different, and then through, let's say, DSL or more likely. Cable, right? And these are all broadcast channels. Whenever you transmit some bits, everyone else connected to that link can hear those bits. Okay? So the voice analogy is basically you yelling out your data to other people, and then selectively people interested in the data can filter it out and, and, and hear it and process it. Okay? You can also have point to point channels. So if you're not using a broadcast media like medium like cable, that is shared by other people on the same street, right, depending how it's kind of how the fiber is laid out. But if using DSL, you're gonna have a twisted pair connection, uh, phone connection to some sort of a box in your neighborhood, right? And then maybe from that box, there'll be an optical fiber going somewhere else, and then maybe even a microwave link between different data centers, right? So this is, electromagnetic spectrum, but it is between directed antennas, and so effectively you have a link here that uh, cannot be easily overheard or, or it doesn't automatically disturb other people in the area of the transmitter. So you can have broadcast or point-to-point -point channels. You can use electromagnetic spectrum. You can use electrical spectrum, right? Ethernet or uh, cable or phone wires. Um, you can use the optical spectrum, which I guess is still electromagnetic uh, in a sense, but within an, within an optical fiber. Those are pretty much the, the ways of transmitting data in, in the internet. And the analogy here is basically two cans linked by a wire, right? It's not a broadcast. You need to have the receiver to, to get the data. Okay. So the operation of link layer, um, or basically the link layer provides these, provides um, different levels of functionality. And so link layer is underneath the network layer where, and the transport layer and the application layer, of course. So the transport layer, the application layer provides application services on end-to-end -end basis between end hosts. The transport layer provides logical communications by creating sockets um, and, uh, kind of linking uh, processes with each other. The network layer provides services for such as routing that will find a path and um, address the different end hosts, okay, but forward the data basically on a hub by hub basis between routers. Okay. And now we have the data link layer, which actually creates the communications between adjacent nodes. And this is how this, these protocols simply control how data bits, how bits of data are transmitted from one node to another. There isn't necessarily a notion of a path, 
uh, there is a notion of a link and who gets to speak on a link and how things are spoken over that link. Okay? So what the data link layer does is it takes IP packets that are being forwarded among the network nodes and encapsulates them in frames and the frames are forwarded over the data link layer. So you have an IP packet that comes from a network layer which contains a transport layer uh, datagram which contains some application data and that IP packet goes to the data link layer. That data link layer delivers it over a link to another data link layer where that frame is then extracted or the IP packet in the data frame is extracted, passed to the network layer. And then after some processing where the network layer may decide, I want to forward this packet on this interface or that interface, that IP packet is then shoved back to the data link layer or a specific interface to be transmitted another hop. And this hop and that hop can have completely different network technology. And it's kind of like you guys traveling from Montana to France using of using different technologies being encapsulated by a ferry or being encapsulated by a, by a plane, but ultimately it's still you moving through the different nodes where you change the transport technology. Okay, pretty elegant stuff. All right, so what the link layer functionality will do is provide framing where um, it adds some headers to your IP packet or, or uh, another network layer packet. Um, and then the framing allows uh, this frames to be basically transmitted and then understood by the receiver on over a particular link. Right. Uh, sorry, I can't read this because there's the data sharing screen sharing stuff in the way, uh, medium access, okay. Um, what this means is that if you have a um, link that is shared, that is a broadcast link, the data link layer needs to figure out who should be speaking at any given time, right? How to take turns or how to divide spectrum and frequencies. If you have frequency division multiple access to figure out how people can speak at the same time or take turns without interfering with each other. So this is the medium access control or the MAC protocol. Okay. It also has error detection where after a transmission of a frame across a link, there is some error checking done to make sure that those bits were not scrambled in the transmission. Now, why do we want to do on hub by hub basis? Well, because it's easier to retransmit something on from the previous hub than from the source. And then we have reliability, which is a way to uh, protect your transmissions from a certain level of errors um, on the air. So we can introduce redundancy into the packets. And even though some bit errors may occur, we may be able to, we may be able to recover from those on the receiver without requesting a retransmission. All right. So how is this implemented? Well, the application layer runs in your user space. The transport layer is sort of in the user space because you're using a socket, but it's also implemented in the operating system. The network layer runs completely in the operating system. Right? But then from the network layer, we take an IP packet and we pass it to the data link layer, which is now going to run at the controller of your network card. Right? So your computer may have multiple network cards, for example, Ethernet and Wi-Fi. You may have a, uh, a cellular network card in your cell phone. Right? And so an IP packet can be transmitted over any of those interfaces, but it is being processed by the hardware specific to making that transmission, which adds the frame. And then it also the network card also modulates the physical layer, the electromagnetic spectrum, the electrical spectrum, you transmit bits in some way that is understood by the receiving network card. So basically transmission of your application data eventually as physical layer symbols that represent some combinations of bits is a combination of hardware, software, and firmware. And it's a whole process that moves data throughout your computer, ultimately to some outgoing port of a network card. Okay, so 
this is where the any questions before we get into the activity. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is um, we'll we'll try to play with breakout sessions um, if this works. Uh, so I'm gonna explain how this is gonna go. So I'm gonna divide you into four breakout sessions. And I don't know, I think I think the best I can do is to assign you randomly. So you may have a, you may have different groups for different iterations of this, which is kind of fine. Um, each breakout session will identify a sender and a receiver. Okay. And the job of the sender will be to transmit a series of bits, um, let's say eight bits. Okay. And the job of the receiver will be to write those down. The challenge will be that what I'm going to do is bring you guys back in to the main session from your breakout session, and the senders will transmit the data at the same time, and the receivers will try to write down the bits from their, from their sender at the same time while all the other groups are speaking because we're using a broadcast channel. Right? And we'll go through multiple iterations of this, see if you guys can actually achieve reliable transmission in this medium. All right. Any questions about the activity? You guys probably get the idea? Okay. Cool. All right. So the job is to transmit eight bits. And I'm going to try to break out, do breakout sessions. Let's see if this works. So we're going to do four sessions, six or seven participants. Okay. Here we go. And by bits, do you just mean like, Eight random letters or numbers or something. I like mean, that. no, I mean uh, ones and zeros. Okay. Yep. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, move to session. Okay, let's go through here. Okay, cool. Um, all right, we got eight sessions. Here we go.
All right, you guys. I yanked you all back in here. Okay. Um, I'm getting some echo, so I'm going to ask everybody who's not a center to mute. <coughs> 六个人才两个人在讲话而已，什么叫每个人都要说话？啊、uh, ，Cool. All right. So let me track. 就是一个很临时、很随意的分。OK. 嗯。All right. That was cool. Um. So if you're the, if you guys are whoever is the sender for each group, uh, you can unmute yourself, and on the count of three. You're going to transmit your random eight bits to your receiver, and the receivers are going to write that down. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Four, zero. Four, zero. Alphabet zero. One, four, one, four, zero, four, zero. Alphabet one. Alphabet zero. <laughs> All right. Alphabet zero, yeah. zero, zero. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just you wait see, long enough. Uh, you see, there are some <laughs> difficulties with this strategy. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Right. Um, what pro receivers? What problems have you faced? It was too fast. I couldn't. Yeah. Was it too fast. Okay. So. What does it mean too fast? It means that you were not able to hear the bits. Okay, maybe the transmission rate was too high for you to actually receive, right? If someone is speaking very fast in a noisy environment, and speaking English in a noisy environment, you might ask them to repeat because you're going to miss some words. Whereas if someone is speaking very slowly and loud in a noisy environment, it's more likely you'll be able to um, process their bits and so there is some kind of error rate on those channels on the channel and so if your symbols are tightly packed and small they're going to be subject to loss all right what other problems have the receivers faced i can comment i only have seven bits and i expected eight so i definitely missed at least one mm -hmm. I think I caught all eight. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> right? There's no error checking. So I grabbed all eight, but I have no idea if what I received was the message that was going to be sent or not. Great problem, right? No no error checking. What else? This that it, did anyone have a problem figuring out who was speaking? Or, or basically keying in on their sender. Weirdly, I, I had a different problem that I could hear certain people very clearly and others not at all. And I think it had to do with who had the louder microphone. <laughs> right, right. So the uh, kind of the, the transmission power is an issue. Mm -hmm. mm. OK, all right. So I'm going to create breakout groups again. and. I'll ask you guys to come up with strategies to deal with this. Um, now, I don't know if I... <laughs> there's some, there's some post-transmission error checking here, okay. Um, I'm gonna uh, create new breakout rooms. I don't know if you're gonna, if you're gonna get the same assignments. So um, let's see. Oh, cool, same groups, perfect. All right, so basically, you guys need to come up with a strategy that uh, is more effective than what just happened.
All right. Um, if you're not the sender, please mute yourself. Um, and so let's see what you guys came up with. So on the count of three, I'm going to have the senders uh, transit some data using your new and improved protocols. All right, ready? One, two, three. Alpha zero zero one zero 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 four zero zero one zero 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 one one zero four one alpha zero zero one two four zero zero one zero at alpha dog dog at Good job, guys. All right, so <laughs> what, what, uh, let's start with, um, uh, I don't know, one of the senders. I don't know who, who went first, who was the first breakout group. Um, what was your strategy? So we kind of changed it before we were planning on doing like an acknowledgement back. So I would say alpha one to signify who was talking and then they would receive an act and I was waiting for that. But then I never got the acknowledgement back and and then, you know, well, you know the rest. Uh, so this time we switched around to where I started sending with alpha so that they knew that that signified us talking and then just all eight bits at once in a very uniform, like um, at once, you know, like as a, on a beat basically, like zero, uh -huh. one, zero, one, that kind of thing. Um, and then I just repeated it three times so that um, hopefully she could like correct herself if there was a Yay. problem. Awesome. Okay, so you added redundancy and you added some framing or, or addressing to identify the sender. Pretty good. All right, um, another sender. What did you guys do? We decided to lengthen um, our message. So instead of saying one, we would lengthen the um, the sound. So it would say one. So it would be a little bit more distinguishable by the person listening for me rather than everybody else's traffic. Mm -hmm. How how did that work? I don't know. Receiver. How did it work, team? I uh, couldn't hear a thing you said. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So not well. Hear... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could hear Jason and Mafe, and that's it. Yeah, and I think a lot of that too is because they said they were saying alpha as well, so it could have gotten lost in translation there. I even put on studio quality recording heads headphones <laughs> to try and make it as clear as possible. <laughs> A more powerful receiver antenna. Yeah, good yep. plan. <laughs> Better hardware. Okay, another group. What is your strategy? We tried to use, well, both like unique words. So we do in mm -hmm. cat talk to try to, I don't know, stand out. Um, and then mm -hmm. we have a response, like an acknowledgement with like a clink. I think you use clinking in a glass or something just to mm. also have like a unique response. So try to like mm. differentiate. Um, but I couldn't hear any of the clinks. So I just, oh, and then I was supposed to wait three seconds for the response and then repeat if I didn't hear it. So I just ended up repeating the same thing until the very end, I could hear the clinks. Yeah, so I think in your group, I actually allowed you guys to cheat and have the receiver be able to send some data back. So instead of having a half duplex link, sorry, Jason. <laughs> I'd love to have a full duplex link. Um, all right. Uh, and the last group, what did you guys do? Um, so we were group number four. So what we did was uh, before every bit, we started team four. So like it would be like four, zero, four, one, four, um, mm -hmm. and so forth. And then um, we <laughs> implemented a uh, made up hexum. So at the end, uh, we said four and then A, which indicated that it's not a bit coming through, but the checksum and then the number at the end of the checksum. And did that work? I think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool, cool. So you had both both addressing and, and a checksum to, to make sure the data came through or at least recognize errors. Very cool. Um, in the past, if you guys are curious, I also had groups uh, Transmit has a very high voice to basically do frequency division to get through. 
Um, I've had people also wait until everyone else finished transmitting and then transmit. Right? So basically take turns, <laughs> which no one came up with here. Um, all right, let me do just a very quick quick summary of this. Um, all right, so oh, come on. Okay, so people can do different frequencies, retransmissions, built-in redundancy, you guys did all of them. Um, and then, you know, taking turns would help a lot. <laughs> no one did that. You guys were all very greedy for the channel. Um, and then higher data rate transmissions were more prone to errors. So some of you figured out to, to lengthen the symbols to, to allow for uh, more kind of physical layer errors, right? So when we talk about, when we get into kind of different MAC protocols and how networks do it, they will basically be applying the same techniques, just doing it, um, you know, via protocols that are standardized across different, different devices. Um, but the principles are the same. So I hope you guys had fun. That's all I have for you today. Uh, and I will see you all on Friday. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Have a good one.